I, I just, I don't even know what to say anymore. More controversial rulings, more hypocrisy coming out of the Supreme Court. Just yesterday, there was another big controversial ruling came out. It, a couple weeks ago, they did strike down a couple of cases with gerrymandering. Uh, legislatures choosing their electorate as opposed to the voters actually choosing who they vote for, which is good. But more controversial rulings and more drama surrounding the Supreme Court and surprise, surprise, a lot of hypocrisy coming out of Clarence frickin' Thomas. Let's get into it. My name is Matthew and this is Matthewland. So, like I said, they did a lot of stuff with gerrymandering. Awesome. Uh, North Carolina, uh, several months ago, uh, they had their state Supreme Court actually said, it, I, I don't want to say that Republicans are racist. I, I really don't. I just want to say that they like to win. That's all I'm saying. They also know that typically black people vote for Democrats. And so the North Carolina State Supreme Court said that the exact quote was surgical precision that they used to draw their, their electoral maps. And that's pretty messed up. But Alabama and Louisiana both had similar cases that got appealed all the way up to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court actually did the right thing for a change, which is recently, these last couple of months, amazing, awesome, I know, I'm shocked. But yesterday, they came out with a decision basically striking down affirmative action. Uh, Clarence Thomas was one of the deciding votes. This is the absolute height of hypocrisy. Here's why. So Clarence Thomas went to law school at Yale. Now he actually never quite felt like he fit in there because he always felt like people thought that he got in there because of affirmative action, which as far as I can tell, he didn't. It, Clarence Thomas, by all accounts, is a very intelligent individual. I'm not taking anything away from him. But the college that he went to before that to get into Yale, there's chances are he did get into there because of affirmative action. Now, when he actually got appointed to the Supreme Court by George Bush, um, he was actually appointed there to replace Thurgood Marshall. Now, if you look at, at a picture of the Supreme Court, just if you don't know which one Clarence Thomas is, he's really easy to pick out. He's the black guy, all right? Thurgood Marshall was the first black Supreme Court justice, okay? So Clarence Thomas was specifically picked to replace another black conservative Supreme Court justice. If that's not affirmative action in action, I don't know what the hell is. So the fact that the man who his entire career, his entire, the fact that he was able to have a legal career, become a federal judge, become on the Supreme Court, the fact that he was a deciding vote to strike down affirmative action is just mind-blowing just blows my mind and he signaled that he wanted to do this when his Dobbs division was leaked out and that was when they decided to get rid of Roe v. Wade and that was another mind-blowing decision that really started to erode the public trust in the Supreme Court now during all the confirmation hearings they're always asked, about, everyone's always asked about their opinion on Roe v. Wade. Everyone always says, well, that's settled law. That's settled law, that's settled law, that's settled law. They never want to get into what their personal opinion is on it because they always say, well, that's settled law, that's precedent upon precedent, which always makes it sound like, yeah, it's precedent, it's done, it's over and done with. Yeah, but they still struck it down. In Clarence Thomas's leaked opinion, he also said that they should revisit gay rights, affirmative action, like all sorts of stuff. 
so it's no that's signaled to everyone all these legal groups, everyone, all these conservative groups that, hey, you should bring some lawsuits. And bring some lawsuits, they did. So that's how they struck down that. And then, so one thing that is upsetting, but I understand, was um, Joe Biden's student debt relief. It's now, the narrative that has been spun on that, a lot of conservatives are saying that this was going to completely eliminate student debt, or this was going to go to people earning six figures and all this stuff. It's not. It's not. I've got a very good friend of mine who's making $80,000 a year, and she has a whole bucket load of student debt. The student debt relief was going to cancel up to $10,000. I think either ten or twenty thousand dollars in some cases and it wouldn't have done anything for her because at eighty thousand dollars she makes too much it wouldn't do that and one thing that a lot of people don't take into consideration is this is something that I think really needs to be taken a really good hard look at is the fact that college tuition prices have gone skyrocketing way faster than the point of inflation that is just messed up that is keeping people out of college that's raising the barrier to entry so the fact that people are taking on greater student loans something needs to be done about that the ruling had more to do with presidential powers which I, I understand I've told a thousand people everyone always complains about the president and whether you like Trump Obama Biden whoever I've always told people well the president isn't a wizard there are a lot of things that the president can do by executive order but he can't do everything and the Supreme Court decision was that the president can't say that he can eliminate up to ten or twenty thousand dollars by executive order he ne this needs to go through Congress. And what sucks is that Joe Biden is really old school in that he really, really, really wants to work with Congress. He really does. But this is such a divided Congress that it's not able to get anything done. But what's funny is that with the infrastructure reduction, the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, um, a lot of the infrastructure projects, a lot of these conservative Republicans, all the MAGA Republicans are, like a, lo a lot of this infrastructure projects are finally starting to come through and they're saying, finally bring in broadband, finally getting these infrastructure projects in, finally getting all these federal tax dollars. And then Biden's going on their social media saying, see you at the groundbreaking because he wants to make sure that people know that, yes, this is the hard work that we've been doing. Uh, Pete Buttigieg was at a press conference and he was asked about conservatives, Republicans trying to take credit for this. And he's, he's like, I really don't care because at the end of the day, good policy is good policy. Now, say what you want about Pete Buttigieg, his, the fact that he's gay, anything, if you like him, if you don't. The fact that any politician can say, I don't care who you are, Republican or Democrat, good policy is good policy. That is the way government should be. That's exactly what it should be. It shouldn't be Democrat versus Republican. That's what Biden wants. He wants everyone to work with each other. That's what makes Biden old school. And the fact that all this crap is going on with the Supreme Court, just, they're getting rid of people's rights. They're, as opposed to expanding on people's rights. The one that came out today was about, there's a web designer who didn't want to work on someone's uh, wedding site that was for a gay wedding. They were saying that it was for their artistic 
reasons because they freedom of expression first amendment which i don't understand what the difference is between that and if you remember a few years back there was another it's a business i'm sorry it's a fucking business at the end of the day it's a business and a couple of years back there was another business that didn't want to make a cake for a gay marriage it's a business and that's an artistic thing it, there's there's no difference it, that's another precedent and again Clarence Thomas was a deciding vote on that I just I know it's gay rights it's not the same thing but a black man who's married to a white woman it I'm probably way off base it that's my personal opinion it's but there's the way that I see that colliding the is its discrimination not too terribly long ago well even today there are people who look down upon black people marrying white people and Clarence Thomas is married to black man married to a white woman now how can you say that it's okay to discriminate in one way and not another now the affirmative action case that they just got rid of there's a specific carve out for the military now think about that for a second why would there be a specific carve out for the military the United States military is the greatest fighting force on the planet right I'm very proud of this fact now if the United States military has come out time and time again and stated that diversity is so damn important why if there's a specific carve out so that the United States military can maintain that and the judiciary is accepting that and acknowledging that and so they're allowing the military to keep that why are they not accepting that for the whole of the country this doesn't make sense to me. A black man married to a white woman who's been discriminated against his entire life is saying that discrimination is okay. I don't understand this. It there I thought that this country was supposed to be trying like this country what this country was built upon what our founding fathers wanted for us. Was to, continue, was to continue taking steps forward, not steps back. Am I, where am I wrong? What am I missing here? I really just want someone to tell me. Cause I'm, I gotta be an idiot or something. Well, anyway, my name is Matthew. If you think anything I said is interesting, if you have an answer to anything, I don't, because I don't understand any of this shit. Please leave a comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.